Having recovered from the forward gun frames, we're now moving on down to the aft gun frames, starting with number two. Learning lessons from the forward gun frame, the first thing we're going to do is double check the height of these steps to make sure they correspond with the dimensions on the plan. This is the aft can frame number two. Uh, we've stuck it on with contact cement as we were having trouble with the rubber cement. Having cut them out, we're now putting them on the spiral sander and we've gone down to the smallest um, sanding drum because of a very tight fit. I got a new printer and thought I would try to see if it would make copies that were dimensionally correct. So I made this copy, put a 5 inch vertical and horizontal line and simply put it on the machine and made a scan copy and then you just put the ruler and verify that the dimensions that you put on it are exactly the same as what it copied and this printer produces dimensionally correct copies. These are th frames 3 and 4 which is much easier to see than what I've been doing using the tracing paper. To help in the exercise of building the aft camped frames, we have photocopied the frames and put some alignment lines on the copy. So we're just going to put some rubber cement on the board just to prevent the, the sheet from moving. The next thing we need to do is to drill some alignment holes and you should do this on the drill press so they're straight up and down. You drill the holes into the alignment board and we put the first pin in and now we'll put the second one in. Now we can start aligning the piece and as you can see it doesn't quite fit too well so we'll have to do a fair amount of adjustment. Now we drill the final holes. and we are ready to stick. We need to put a small piece of wax paper over them to prevent the, the epoxy sticking. I tend to put it on liberally just to make sure it gets everywhere it's supposed to go. And the same thing on the other side. Put your alignment holes up and, and it's all done. I put a little alligator clip on it just to, just to pull it together. Um, it's not necessary but you just need to make sure that all the surfaces are flat um, and so that you don't have a bend. I'm not going to go and show you me making all these other camp frames, but it's just a repeat of the same process. 
Now we start to examine the work I had done previously on the stern. And we see that can frame number one, which we stuck, we haven't um, cut the edge. The easiest way to do that is with these Japanese knives. We're correcting some errors um, from the stern here. This aft can frame number one clearly was too much this way. Um, so we've sanded it down, which again, going back to the front, might require a laminate on the inside here. Um, but we'll wait until we put the second can frame in um, before we decide if we're going to do that. So we've got it lined up on both sides now. And I'm quite sure that's going to mean some adjustment on the, ins on the inside here. Double checking the vertical uh, measurement to plan. If you remember, I did a fair amount of correction to this. And what we're trying to do is to make sure that all the adjustments that are going to take place take place now on the model. For some reason, the right at the foot of the heel, um, we were out about one sixty-fourth of an inch. So we actually made this frame thinner to compensate for that, which would allow the line on the outside here. Uh, to be exactly where it should be. And so we're ready to start gluing in. I'm making sure that the heel is fully stepped down and fully inside the, the step and that there's a lot of extra wood that um, comes over so that I can sand and not have to do any filling afterwards. Note the little wedges that we use to make sure that the frame is absolutely square against the vertical building board. We use this tool to set the height from the bottom of the building board with the dimensions taken straight off the plan. As we go forward we're going to put the spacer blocks in place at the correct height. Learning from the installation of the spacer blocks in the forward cam frames we've decided to drill and pin them in the same batches of four to keep the whole set stable. Just to go through the sequence of developing the frame number 10, built up on a frame template exactly as all the others. This is the cast timber um, and we made it by making a solid piece. We create a test piece to set the depth so that we will end up on this side with exactly 9 inches. And now we are going to take down one side, um, take those 2 inches out. Now we flip it over and do the other side. And here are both sides fully cut out. You just need to put a chisel and file them down. And here we have them all complete. 
Um, after using the chisel, I put the pen sander on it, and I have to say it came out pretty good. Now, having said that, these are my fifth units. I've been making the heel at this end a little thicker than I normally would to allow me to adjust as I sand the angle down. So the plan called for 8 degrees and on number 10 I am finding it's actually uh, 10 and a half degrees. And of course we have to use a small square to line it up on the building board. And this is the last one, number 13, uh, being put in place. And I thought I'd just film this for posterity. And as you can see, she's perfectly lined up on the board. And she lines a horizontal plan. Putting in the permanent spacers. This uh, brings us to the end of this part of the build of the Afghan frames. Um, I have to say it was much easier doing the back than doing the front. And that just goes to show what David and Greg keep saying in the book and in some of the emails that have exchanged with me that the more you do this the easier it gets so I'm feeling much more competent now and very enthusiastic to go after the rest of the build I was reviewing the first tape that I had done and <laughs> was fascinated to discover that I started this build um, literally 12 months ago, one year ago and um, it just shows you this is really quite an intense and long journey. But I have to say that I am enjoying it now much more as my skill levels have improved. And I'm really looking forward to the rest of the build.